Hello, and welcome to the first lecture in the R tutorial lecture series for Professor Kozak's class. I'm going to be teaching you guys the basics of R Studio in this lecture, specifically the four different views that are important, the console view, the file view, the uh, variable or environment view, and the script view. I'm also going to be teaching you a little bit about navigating through R Studio and how to source files and run them and um, some really basic coding stuff. So first of all, I'm gonna, this video is gonna presuppose that you've installed R Studio and you've downloaded the folder R tutorial that Professor Kozak will have provided for you. For me, I've installed, I've downloaded that folder and put it on my desktop. Um, you can put it anywhere. The process is pretty much the exact same, but basically all you need to do is you need to know where that, where that folder is, and then you need to just go to your base directory and navigate to it. So for example, for me, like I said, and I'm, I'm on a Mac, so my base directory is going to be home in this case. But if you're on a Windows machine, it may be C colon something. If you're on a Linux machine, it'll probably also be home. But you know, whatever your base directory is. And like I said, I put it on my desktop. So I'm going to go, um, go to my home directory. And then I'm going to click on this little folder right here. It says desktop. That's going to take me to my desktop. And I'm going to go to this R tutorial folder. And now I'm inside of here. So once you've navigated to the folder, you're going to go ahead and open up this, this first script.r just by clicking on it. What this is going to do is this is going to pop up the um, the script view. So now we're going to get into some of the views that we have here. We have four views that are important. Like I said, the script view is up here in the top left, which will open up when you have a script that you're looking at. The bottom right is going to be your folder or your file view, where you're going to be able to look at what files are available to you, and you're going to be able to navigate through it. Um, in the bottom left, you're going to have your console view, which is basically just where code is going to get executed, and you're going to be able to see the outputs of it. In the top right, you're going to have your variable view or your environment view, where you're going to be able to see what variables are in your environment and you know, be able to look at them, be able to click at them on them and see more detailed information about them, stuff like that. So the now that we've talked about the views a little bit, up here in this left script view, you're going to see the script that I've, you know, that's been pre-written for you. And it's just a little one-liner with this print statement. And all that this print thing does is it basically takes um, the the string which is the characters stored inside of the, in between these, um, these quotation marks. And it's going to output it to our console for us. So for example, um, let me show you first of all how to run a script. So there's two ways to run a script. And then we're going to see what the, we're going to see exactly what the print statement does. There's two ways to run a script. You can either hit this run button here, which will run the script line by line. So I can either highlight the line and hit run, or just have my cursor on the line and hit run. And either way, it's going to output this string to the bottom left little window right here. And as you can see, that string that was inside of the inside of the quotation marks is just going to be put down here. Um, the other way to run a script is to hit this source button, and that's going to run the whole script, every single line. Right now, we've only got two lines, and one of them is blank. So it'll do the exact same thing as hitting run on that line, but it'll sort of put a different little um, blue text thing here. And that's going to be, don't worry about that for right now. But as you can see, same output as the previous. Now, the difference is, like I said, it runs the whole script. So let's say I added another print statement here. Um, and I were to hit run on this first line, it would just run that same, you just ran your first R script. But if I were to hit source, it's going to run the whole thing. All three lines, all three lines of this, of which one is blank. So that's important because if you want to run it line by line, you can use this run thing here. Or if you want to do the whole script, you just hit source. And another cool, a kind of cool trick that's not necessarily specifically R Studio related. Um, if you're on a Mac, you can hit Command A, or if you're on a Windows or Linux machine, you can hit Control A. That'll highlight in general with most programs that'll highlight. Um, but specifically R Studio, that'll highlight all of the lines in this file if you're inside of the file, or if you have the if you're clicked inside of the file. And then you can just hit run and it'll run it line by line, but the whole file. So that's actually pretty cool. But now getting back down to this console window, like I said, it executes commands. But it's not just a reflection of what you run in the script window. You can also run stuff down in this console window as sort of one-liners that you want to run just to like see if something happens. For example, if I said um, X is one, two, three, four, five. And that's just saying, that's just creating an array, which is a set of, which is just a sort of organization of numbers. 
Um, that is one, two, three, four, five. If I wanted to say, you know, if I didn't really care about saving what, or like, you know, having the code that gets the mean of that inside of my script where it could be saved, but I just want to know what the mean of this is, I could just run that out here and it'd give me the output in this console window, but it won't like, you know, won't save it anywhere. Um, unless I set it to a variable like I did with this X. We're going to get into variables a little bit later. Just know that, you know, for right now, don't worry too much about what this um, arrow thing is doing. But the, like I said, the important difference is that stuff that's run in the console is not saved. It's, you can use up arrow or down arrow in here to go ahead and get the different, like, to go ahead and go back into your history and see what you ran. But when you close out of this computer, that's going to be, that's going to be completely lost. Or when you close out of this window, it's going to be completely lost. Whereas if I saved it in here, uh, that is now permanently saved. And whenever I source this file, it's going to go ahead and set X to that variable for me. So that's general. You kind of want to do most of your stuff in the, um, in scripts, because that way you can rerun it whenever you want to, or when you want to send it to someone else, they can have it exactly the way that you did it. But um, sometimes you just want to run a one liner down the console. So, okay, that's covered the console, covered scripts, covered how to source files and stuff. We're now going to look at this variable view up here. So as you can see, I set a variable equal to um, x is one, two, three, four, five, just this array, which again is an organization of numbers um, of one that has one, two, three, four, five in it. And you can see that up here in this variable view. The variable view is useful for seeing what is in your environment, like what variables have been set in your environment. Say I want to set a variable to y is um, two. Here that would also show up here. And so when you're like running a script and you want to see whether or not the data is in there or like the clean data is in there or something like that, you can go up to this variable view and see if it's actually there. Now, this isn't so important when it's data as simple as like one, two, three, four, five stored in an array or the number two stored in a variable, but it gets much more important when you have large sets of data and you kind of want to look at it. And you kind of want to see it in a more um, granular sort of perspective. So let's say, let's set X now, which is resetting the variable to a different value. Um, don't worry about what I'm doing here. We're going to get to um, what, like, what this read.csv thing is actually doing and uh, you know, all that in a later lecture. But for right now, um, just know that I'm grabbing some data. So now x is this variable with 7,000, like this massive variable, right? Well, we want to view that. So when I click on it up in this variable view, it's going to pull it up here in this. Um, it's going to pull up all of this stuff up here in this in our script view, where it's looking at this variable. So the important thing is that when you have larger, large pieces like data that's massive, such as like I don't know, um, rainfall levels over a period of years or whatever, you can just if you have that imported into your into your environment, you can just click on the variable up here and it'll show you what it sees now here. And this is a little bit confusing for right now. That's because it's not parsed properly. Later on, I'm going to show you guys how to parse that properly and how to get it cleaned up. And, you know, but that's further down the line. So the final piece of information that I'm going to show you guys is um, how to debug scripts here. So debugging is sort of this important concept that you're going to be using for when you write your own scripts and you want to figure out when something goes wrong and you want to figure out what's going wrong or something isn't what you expect it to be, you're going to be using debugging to figure that out. So what debugging is, is debugging lets you set breakpoints, which are ways to stop the code when something happens, um, or where, or at a place for code where something happens. So let's say I have a print statement that says, um, that has, you know, this is a script that has two lines, it has two different, uh, you know, three lines, but one of them is blank. And I want to, see what the code looks like before I hit this statement. What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to click on, I'm going to go back to this. You're going to go to this three. This is the line you want it to stop on. You're going to click to the left of it, and it's going to give you put a breakpoint there. And you're going to know by that red little dot. And then what you're going to do is if you hit source on this file, um, what's going to happen is it's going to execute all lines of code up until the, up until the code that you've got the breakpoint on. And it's going to stop at that breakpoint with this little arrow. That's how you know. And it's going to show you um, the environment right before that. So, for example, there's nothing that I've actually done here, but it's going to like you know if I'd set x equal to 12 or something, 
that would show up here. Um, so this is this is really this will be really important later on, and you kind of just need to know how this works right now. But I'll show you why it's useful in a later lecture. So, and the way you end the um, the debugging session is you hit the stop thing right here. And so yeah, so that is the first lecture in this series. This is just some basic stuff, but we're going to be digging into how to set variables, what variables are, and data types in the next lecture. Thank you very much. Have a nice day.